This is a dwarf gourami, Trichogaster lilias, native to Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh, but worldwide it's been populated in many freshwater aquariums. It is your subscriber requested pattern, and we are going to paint something cool today. Let's get started. Okay, so in the wild, a dwarf gourami is not going to get over three, maybe just over three inches. In captivity, which is probably where you've seen them, if you've seen them at all, because they're native to India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan, you've probably not seen them any bigger than this, right around two inches. They are small-ish as gouramis go, and that makes them perfect candidates for smaller tanks if you're an aquarist and you are a tank and you keep freshwater or saltwater fish. This obviously is a freshwater species, kind of inhabits skinny water, slow moving water, not quite as fast as some of the stuff that you would see, say in the States, in the mountain streams. But it's a beautiful fish. Females are kind of a silvery color and they lack that luster that uh, the males produce with that orange and blue. And there's a couple of different reasons, aside from the fact that it was your number one choice and this is a subscriber requested pattern for me to do when we did the survey. Um, but it also kind of mimics a pumpkin seed. So it would also be an excellent candidate for you guys to paint or to sell. I think it would do very well on most waters here in the United States. And again, four to six years in an aquarium is about the average lifespan for these guys, a little bit longer in in not in captivity and you will have yourself a wonderful pattern when we're finished now i'm going to start by doing a transparent white we do have some back foiling going on here um, which is fine except we really aren't going to use it i use this particular one because it's a smaller bodied lipless and uh, any any of the back shimmer that we get from this is going to do pretty well. Now this particular one is two inches or five centimeters, 50 millimeters, give or take a couple of millimeters because conversion wise inches to centimeters are usually off by about two twelfths of an inch. Okay we're going to start with a little bit of transparent illustration base, much thinner but it's going to get the job done for what we want to do. And I'm just going to start with a few drops to kind of get this. And you can see that it still gives off that sheen and we are going to heat set after this before I put anything darker on because this is a very liquid. Now that we have that dry, I'm going to also add just a little bit of black as a base on the throat. Probably don't even need five drops. We want to bring our pressure down. I was running that base layer on around 40. Yes, it's high. But now, just down to the chest, bring this off so you can see the transformation here as I do it. I'm going to add just a little bit of an area of black. And we're going to run that all the way up and down the other side. Just underneath and over the very base of the gill plate. But not much more than that. I have got just a little bit of fluorescent yellow loaded in because if you'll notice there is a little bit of a shift in color. It gets a little bit lighter towards the face and a little bit more of that flame orange towards the back. But we're going to blend all that together now that we have our black down. Just do a quick check here make sure that's coming out all yellow that we've gotten all the black out of the chamber. And I'm just going to start by just coloring in all the stuff that's not black. Super easy because we're going to blend that orange down as we go. 
Got a lower pressure at this point. And there we go. Yellow is on. Now that we have that yellow on, we can start to fold in different shades of orange. I am going to add just a little bit of fluorescent orange around the face. And this should go relatively quick. It's not per se the most difficult pattern, but there are some things that we're going to need to do to ensure we're doing it correctly. There we go. Just add and then bring that all the way back. And then the way it works with blending colors is that you gradually get darker by folding darker colors onto lighter colors. So as we go through this, leaving just a little bit of yellow, that fluorescent yellow around the eye. And then as we go further back down the body, we'll get darker and darker on our oranges. Now I can probably get one more layer of this real dark sun. It's called sunset red, but it is traditionally an orange. It's noted as an orange in the Createx color spectrum. And then we're going to come up from the back and the underneath and just really get that nice dark orange in here. So that we are left with something that looks like that. Just a little bit of light on the back, on both sides. Pretty happy with that. The next thing we're going to do is blend the blue. We're going to do a couple of different mixes here. First and foremost, starting off with just a little bit of special sauce. What is that special sauce, you say? Well, it's a little bit of pearl additive and some periwinkle paint. We want a little bit of glitter, but I want a little more than just pearl additive and periwinkle paint. Some of these inks from FW can give a considerable amount. I don't want too much of this because I don't want this to be green. I really like the blue in this. So we are going to keep it as natural looking as we can. This is a turquoise FW. What I added before is a waterfall green, cascade green. I'm going to add a couple of drops of white because we need to keep this real, real light. And this is a very light um, blue. But it needs to be dark enough to where we can add it. I don't know what's going on with this. I just bought this and unfortunately, and it's my mistake, I did not purchase it through Blick Online. I purchased it through Amazon and it looks like the paint's probably gotten hot and then cooled off. It's still workable. Just gotta make sure that there's no lumps in it. And that is an Opaque Sky Blue by Createx. And then just a little bit of Maui one drop there, and then a little thicker opaque white. I'll mix this all together and get that nice rich blue as we mix it. Now it's light enough to where I can add in just a little bit of this Spectratex metallic blue, which is super metallic. No doubt about that. I don't need much of it. And 
we want that shimmer for sure. I've got just a little bit of this mixed blue in the cup and I'm going to start by doing this throat area and then get on this side And the beauty about having a black background is that you can really see where it is on this bait. And that'll help me stay in the lines a little bit better. I would like to get a little bit deeper on the throat of this bait, down to the chest. There we go. Flip it around to the other side. Do the same thing. Just got to flip this around. So this is a stencil from Anarchy UK, one that I use frequently. And the scales, the point should go towards the head always, and the scales should go back towards the tail. And then add that. Just try and keep a steady hand as you add it in. And then everything else we can do by hand. Now that we're over here at the finishing desk, I've got my little cup of paint with me. And I'm going to fill in just a little bit more by hand around the mouth and the gill plates, similar to how I would do an overlay on a bluegill. And going back to the sunfish family, this is somewhat of a similar pattern. At least the colors are similar to that pumpkin seed. And I just want to add in a little bit of hand detailing to this to kind of give it a little bit more of a believable portrayal. using it's from a 30 pack five millimeter from John over at Jetson and it is these eyes right here although you can probably see it a little bit better under the light these are natural eyes in a silver now, if you look real close at this pattern on the page um, it is a silver eye that is natural to this 
species. Just a tiny bit. Make sure I've got my pupils going in the right direction. I'm gonna go just like this. And we'll flip it over. Man, look at how pretty this is. I'm so happy with how this is turning out. Just one little drip here. I kind of, you know, obviously I'm not going to represent any brands uh, on what I would prefer to use, but I will say, <laughs> of course, uh, no, <laughs> this probably has the best tip for precise placement, if you guys can see that. These tips are really good. They don't get mucky. Um, they don't gum up like some of the other ones do. So thus far, and I've used a lot of them, I've used a lot of different brands. I really do like this Gorilla. And it doesn't have, now I've been, I kind of test it for a period of time before I ever talk about it because I don't want it to have any kind of weird reaction with the KBS that I use or any of that nonsense. So I'm not going to recommend something before I've tested the, the mess out of it. So ladies and gentlemen, fish heads, children of all ages. This is, wow, that's really bright. I just looked up into the screen indicator and that's super, super bright. Um, this is that dwarf, there we go, dwarf garami, as requested by you guys, both on the Facebook page and also on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope I was able to teach you guys a couple things. I always love showing you some new patterns and I hope it gives you guys some really good creative juices and new ideas for your stuff. I will see you on the next spray session, which is probably gonna be coming up by the weekend. Cheers, happy casting, and thanks for hanging out with me today right here at Jekyll Bates. See ya.